Hi, my name is Deb Howard and I'm the Education Coordinator here at the National Corvette Museum. Thank you for joining in with us. Today, we're going to talk a little bit about the word generation. Now, you may have some background knowledge already with that word, but I'm going to give you a few examples of what it might mean, and then we're going to talk about how it might relate to Corvettes. Here's an example. I was born in the year 1969. People who were born a few years earlier than me in the early 1960s, all the way to people who were born in the late 1970s are considered part of my generation. We're often referred to as Generation X. My parents' generation, they were born in the 1940s. People who were born roughly 1944 through the early 1960s are often called the baby boomer generation. Now you may have been born between the year 1995 and the year 2015. If you were born within that time frame, you're considered Generation Z. Now, people of the same generation tend to have the same interests. We're roughly the same age, within 10 to 15 years of each other. So we may like the same music or the same movies, and we also have experienced events going on in the world together with people of our own age, so we may have our own take on it. But did you also know that Corvettes, through the years, are also grouped in their own generation? We're going to learn a little bit about that today. The first Corvette generation, or C1, began in 1953 and ended in 1962. There were only 300 produced that very first year. The first Corvettes were produced in Flint, Michigan. The next production year began in St. Louis, Missouri in December of 1953. The second Corvette generation, or C2, spanned from 1963 to 1967. A unique thing about this generation occurred in the 1963 model. It was the only year for the split window coupe and it was the first Corvette coupe ever made. In addition, the 1963 Corvette became the first with hideaway headlamps. Nowadays, collectors often go in search of this special split window gem. C3, Corvette's third generation, was also its longest. It ran from 1968 all the way to 1982. Can you figure out how many years that would be if you found the difference? 1,982 minus 1,968. You can subtract or you can count up, but the answer would be 14 years. In 1969, the 250,000th Corvette came off the assembly line in St. Louis called the Quarter Mill Corvette. It was gold in color and was eventually bought by a gentleman for a total of $5,060. In 1977, the 500,000th Corvette, a white coupe with red interior, was produced in St. Louis. And in 1981, production shifted from St. Louis, Missouri to Bowling Green, Kentucky. This was the first time a model was built in two locations at the same time. The C4 generation spanned from 1984 through 1996. In 1990, the Corvette introduced the ZR1. The National Corvette Museum opened its doors during this generation as well in September of 1994. We recently celebrated our 25th anniversary this past fall. In 1992, the one millionth Corvette, a white convertible with red interior matching the first Corvettes of 1953, rolled off the Bowling Green assembly line on July 2nd. The C5 Corvette generation lasted from 1997 through 2004. 1998 marked the first year since 1962 that a separate trunk with outside access was available on the convertible. Also, the 50th anniversary of Corvette fell within this generation in 2003. The sixth generation of Corvette, or C6, spanned from 2005 to 2013. A fun fact about this generation is that Corvettes once again had exposed headlights. 
for the first time since 1962. Remote keyless access and push button start with key fobs began back in 2005 as well. C7, Corvette's seventh generation, was a fairly short span. The seventh generation was produced from 2014 to 2019. In 2013, aluminum frames became the standard for all coupes and convertible models. The 2019 Corvette ZR1 has the most horsepower of any Corvette, along with the fastest recorded top speed of over 212 miles per hour. As of 2020, we have entered our newest generation of Corvette, the C8. This generation is very special in that it introduced the mid-engine Corvette. The car's engine is literally in the middle of the car, behind the driver. If you open the front hood, you will now find a trunk, or a frunk, as it is now called. Here at the museum, we often get to cheer on Corvette owners when they stop here to pick up their new cars with our delivery program. If you would like to learn more about each generation of Corvette, head on over to our website at corvettemuseum.org and click on the Learn tab at the top of the page. The drop-down menu will guide you to our Corvette Specs page, and there you can learn some history and facts about every model year of Corvette. Thanks for joining us today, and be sure to come back tomorrow to learn about the events that happened on February 12, 2014 at the National Corvette Museum.